Greetings from ABC Acres. I'm Grant Shadden, and I'm here next to our crater garden to give an update on what's been happening this spring and summer. Now, we've had a lot of projects going on all over the property, but I wanted to give you an update on all of the life that has just been happening here since creating this crater garden. Now, it's not directly a permaculture principle per se, but what we found to be true is when doing permaculture projects, if you create the conditions for life to happen, it will. That sounds pretty simplistic, but this is a great example right here with our crater garden, where we were just digging out for, for farm road base, the rocky sandy aggregate and having water fill in, and creating these uh, terraces and the island and our uh, in-process chinampa beds. And we have seen just all these waterfowl coming in, the geese and the ducks, and even a great blue heron and some kingfishers and sandhill cranes all coming to this place that they, they never came here before. But now that the conditions have been created for them to be supported, they just show up and it's been really inspiring and encouraging to see that. And we've also had even uh, last fall when the water level wasn't quite as deep and our seasonal water was dropping, we found fish in one of the shallow pools uh, about to be left by the dropping water to die, but they were rescued and we had not put those fish in there. So we had heard about how fish eggs can get attached to the webbed feet of waterfowl and then the waterfowl come and fly and they land into another body of water and it takes and pulls those uh, fish eggs off effectively seeding a new water area with fish and that happened here and it was so validating for us and inspiring to see that in just one year of having some open water and we further developed it and we've literally this spring been witnessing thousands and thousands of frog eggs develop into tadpoles. And now we have thousands of frogs in our, in our water here and right along the shoreline. And even this morning, one of our uh, farm helpers was showing some uh, visiting volunteers the, the frogs and they found a very uh, fat very happy garter snake that's been feeding on the baby frogs. So in very short succession, we've been able to see this developing ecosystem. We didn't bring in any of these forms of wildlife, but they were drawn to this place just by creating those conditions. So be encouraged with your projects that you don't have to add everything in. It's not like you have to have some sort of starter kit and buy everything. If we, if we do it right, if we take those steps towards creation, towards nature, it will march right back towards us. Uh, it does most of the heavy lifting for us, what we found. So we're going to go and actually see if we can uh, catch some frogs. And so you can see our, our baby frog population. And, and frogs, amphibians in water is a very good indicator of clean water. So we're very excited about that. The, uh, the environment here locally is uh, giving us the thumbs up on our water quality without having to test it. The fact that we have so many frogs here tells us that we have good clean water. But for now, we're going on a frog hunt. All right. You can see all this movement, all these frogs heading towards the water. I'm carefully trying to sneak up on them or catch up to them without stepping on them. But you can see them going for the shore and look at all these little baby Kermits right there. Kermit the frog. We have literally thousands moving along down back to the water. We don't have to worry about mosquitoes in our crater garden water, that's for sure. I mean, just look at all that movement. Really, really cool to see all this life happening here. And you can also see here along the slope of one of our terraces, all of these hoof prints from uh, elk 
coming down to get a drink. We've had white-tailed deer, and those are just the things that we either can see through the tracks or that we've seen personally down here. But very, very encouraging, beautiful place. We're still definitely in process with it, but the local environment is helping us right along. Well, I'm not gonna keep going on and on. We could keep going around the edges and showing you different things. We've seen some cattails starting to come up in one of our underwater terraces, which we're really excited about in terms of uh, just a natural water, a filtration system through the biology and the interaction of the cattails on the edges of our, of our water area, of our crater garden. But I did find this on one of our uh, chinampa beds that we've been building just over there in the distance. And uh, it's just the remains, the claws and uh, shells of some crawfish, which is really interesting to me that there was either some sort of predatory bird or other that uh, either fed on some crawfish in our crater garden and then just got rid of the waste here or they came from the surrounding uh, seasonal wetland in the floodplain off in the distance or the river a little further. Either way, that interaction between once again the natural environment and this permaculture constructed crater garden is a very encouraging thing and I think a great message that we're getting from the surrounding natural environment and that you can take and apply to your property as well. Sometimes we try to exclude wildlife and there is a time and place for that when we're really going after production, but if you have some areas that you can put into service to enjoy natural beauty, even enhance habitat and create these beautiful places for both us as people and the wildlife around us to enjoy, we'll all be winning. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below this video. And as always, thanks for watching.